Yeah. Let's have you, 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 you working lunch ne? so that we try and push, we don't delay you. Yeah. What time is it now? Five two. Yeah, and the house is starting at two. <clears throat> As it is, Mr. D, I do. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's supposed to be Miss. So I mean, she, you guys are saying Miss, but on my paper, it's written a mistake. So it's your fault. It's not mine. <laughs> uh, maybe uh, let me check also. So Kayla, to do it if they are back. And if the, the, there's any... Uh, <laughs> NGO that is here. Okay. Oh, okay. And you, Futi? And you, no? None of the presenter. And you, no? Oh, nani ni kona yangi anbon. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, nina bala keep on now. Yeah, it's okay. What's the whole thing? Kosatu, Kosatu is coming. Okay, and Kosatu. So. Okay. Miss Naidu, the platform is yours, madam. Blame Nelly, so not me. Oh, that's all right, Chair. Oh, that's all right, Chair. It was an error. May I share my screen, Chair? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, may I kindly ask the host, the host to enable screen sharing? Yeah, done. It's done. Thank you. All right, so I'm just checking that you can hear me and see my screen. Yeah. All right. Greetings, Chair, Portfolio Committee, Honorable Members, and colleagues in the room. My name is Devashni Naidu. I represent the Helen Sussman Foundation today. Um, the Helen Sussman Foundation is a non-governmental organization whose main objective is to promote constitutional democracy, the rule of law, and the rights of vulnerable persons who are unable to use the ordinary political process um, to do so themselves. This submission serves to signal the broad support for the National Council on Gender-Based Violence and Femicide Bill with the consideration of some amendments. In summary, HSF submits that, one, the bill's definition of gender-based violence should be expanded to include violence based on gender identity and sexuality. Two, that the NSP's deadline for March 2024 for achieving its targets should be extended to allow council enough time to formulate their action plan and to implement the NSP to seek public comment thereon and properly implement the action plan itself. Three, that the bill's intersectoral approach to eliminating GBV and femicide should include organs of state listed in pillar one of the NSP 
as well as the National Prosecuting Authority and the Department of Basic Education. Four, that the bill must provide for the council's operational structures so that it can best implement the council's action plan at a national, provincial, and local level. Five, that the council's chief executive officer must be sufficiently independent. And lastly, six, that oversight of the council must be improved by establishing a parliamentary oversight committee dedicated to implementing the NSP and by providing for regular reporting periods and public participation in the council's reporting process. If you allow me to shortly elaborate on each of these in turn. On our first submission, expanding the de definition of gender-based violence. Section one of the bill defines gender-based violence without expressly including non-conforming sexual or gender identities. In doing so, the bill leaves out of the council's purview significant groups of people who are also at risk of violence, animated by exactly similar prejudice and stereotypes. Moreover, the NSP is expressly caters for people with non-conforming sexual and gender identities, and it stands to reason that the bill should do so as well to ensure that the council effectively implements the NSP. On our second submission, implementation of the NSP, section 5.1a of the bill requires council to implement the NSP through its action plan. To ensure the actions plan effectiveness, the public and relevant stakeholders must be allowed to make comment thereon before it's adopted. To the extent that the bill allows the council to review and to subsequently amend the NSP, these future versions of the NSP and any consequent action plan that arises from it should also be subjected to a public participation progress, process. Further, we would add here that the council may find itself pressed for time in formulating and implementing its action plan given that the NSP has set March 2024 as the deadline for achieving its targets. This is because the bill allows for six months after the council has been established to formulate its action plan. This is besides the time that will take to pass the bill and appoint the council members. As such, we would submit that the NSP's deadline should be reasonably adjusted in the bill. Our third submission is addressing the operational gaps in the bill. Section 5.1H, read with section 16B of the bill, requires intersectoral cooperation between ministries, departments, and different levels of government when combating GBV and femicide. The bill does not specify a closed list of participants in its proposed intersectoral approach, so we submit that these structures must further include the Commission for Gender Equality, the South African Human Rights Commission, the Public Service Commission, and the Cultural, Religious, and Linguistic Rights Commission. These entities are all listed under Pillar 1 of the NSP, so it stands to reason that they should be a part of the Council's coordinated efforts as well. In addition to these, we would submit that these efforts should also include the Department of Basic Education and the National Prosecuting Authority given the priority that the NSP gives to the schools-based schools initiatives and prosecutorial effectiveness in combating GBVF. The fourth point we would like to make here is that section 5.1i of the bill requires the council to monitor and evaluate the NSP's implementation nationally, provincially, locally, as well as in community and other forums. However, the bill does not, but should provide for structures through which the council carries out its mandate at each of these levels. We submit that the bill, or suggest rather the bill could do this in three ways. Firstly, the bill itself could detail these structures. Secondly, the bill could provide that the Minister of U Women, Youth and Persons with Disabilities make regulations in consultation with the council to provide for such structures, or alternatively, thirdly, the bill could require that the council include local, provincial, and national operating structures as part of its action plan. 
This is only on the condition that the action plan is subject to a public consultation before it's adopted as we previously submitted. Our fifth omission on the independence of the CEO. As it stands, the bill does not guard against appointing persons with conflicts of interest as the council CEO. This could be especially problematic when the council embarks on its intersectoral approach to implementing the NSP. As such, we submit that a further criterion of the CEO position must be that the appointee is sufficiently independent of interests that could interfere, interfere with the council's mandate. Our last submission, increased oversight and accountability. As it stands, the bill does not, but should render the council directly accountable to parliament via a dedicated portfolio committee. In this regard, the NSP suggests a parliamentary oversight committee dedicated to monitoring the NSP's implementation. A second point here is that we do recognize in section 51J of the bill that it requires the council to report to cabinet. However, this reporting function, we believe, could be enhanced by specifying reporting intervals, making reports publicly accessible, and providing for public comment in this reporting function. Thirdly, we would add here that Section 20 of the Bill does not, but should provide for public participation in the Council's annual reporting function to Parliament. A good example that this follows, or if this was implemented, a good example it would follow is that of the National Minimum Wage Act, which provides that public views are reflected in the annual review report of the National Minimum Wage Commission. So in conclusion, we submit that we welcome the government's implementation of the NSP by the council to eliminate GBV and femicide in South Africa. However, we submit that the bill can be improved by using more inclusive language in the bill's definition of GBV, providing guidance as to the council's operational structure at a national, provincial, and local level, and ensuring increased public participation in formulating the council's action plan and its reporting progress. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Ms. Naidu from the HSF. Um, honorable members, the presentation is before us. Are there any members who wish to make any contributions and uh, or ask questions or engage the presentation? Honorable Sharif. Uh, thank you very much, Acting Chair. I just wanted to check with Ms. Naidu in the section six, the Board of Council, it does mention justice and constitutional development. Um, is the recommendation that we it's it's justice and correctional and then added um, the entity of the National Prosecuting Authority because they would then fall under that portfolio committee. So just some clarity there. And in terms of um the board being accountable to, to to Parliament through a portfolio committee and not directly to Cabinet. Um, are they suggesting a formulation of a new portfolio committee or would do you foresee it coming to, to this portfolio committee? Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, um, Honorable Sharif. I just wanted to also um, um, ask around the issue of accountability and oversight. Um, I think the presentation is proposing um, for the board to account directly to a new portfolio committee, if I'm not mistaken, Ms. Naidu. But I just wanted to check if um, you are aware of the current oversight responsibilities of this portfolio committee for women, youth and persons with disabilities, and also whether you um, feel that this portfolio committee will not be you know, sufficient enough to handle 
the oversight responsibilities over the council as you propose. I'll hand over to you and give you an opportunity to respond. Thank you for those questions, honorable members. On the first question of whether the NPA should be included separately um, in or rather in conjunction with the Department of Justice, the submission was made more on the understanding that when the council takes its intersectoral approaches that explicitly the NPA must be included in such. So that's not necessarily on the board. If that does mean that on the board, we have the inclusion of the NPA, we would advocate for that. But it's more just an understanding that in this multi-sectoral and intersectoral approaches, as I think have been mentioned by previous submissions, we would want for all the bodies identified in the NSP to be included. On the second question of parliamentary oversight, Unfortunately, I'm not that familiar with the oversight um, functions of this particular portfolio committee. What the underlying submission that we make is, the NSP provides that the council must directly report. In addition to, as maybe the bill provides to cabinet, this council must directly report to a dedicated portfolio committee at parliament, which it doesn't do in terms of this bill. If it does, if is legislated as such that this specific portfolio committee is indeed that portfolio committee, then I think that would be sufficient. But the submission is more that there should be an accountability measure directly between the council and parliament, and not only to council and the executive or council to parliament via an annual report through the minister, in other words, the executive. Does that provide clarity on that? Yeah, it does. Are you covered, um, Honorable Sharif? All right, thank you very much, Ms. Naidu. Thank you for your responses. Thank you. Okay.